Welcome Climate Viewers, this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, uh, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. Um, today is my birthday, so I'm pretty stoked about that. I was born November 4th, 1976. I'm a bicentennial baby. And I'm 42, and as we all know, 42 is the meaning of the universe, so this must be a good year. Um, but regardless, you know, I, I posted on my Facebook earlier, I'm looking to, you know, blow off some steam, and I'm by blow off, I mean headshots. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that you guys can help me out here. I'm, I'd like to get a video game. It's been a while, you know, it's been a couple of years since I used to be in a first person shooter clan. And, um, you know, did a lot of uh, the shooting games, headshot, headshot. And uh, unfortunately for me, my beautiful $699 GeForce GTX 680 died on me. And I've been on this backup video card ever since. And I was looking into getting Battlefield 5. A couple people donated earlier. I've got enough to get the game, but of course the requirements are out of my range. So if you could be so kind as to uh, donate, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm um, going to be needing a new video card. Uh, it would help out with rendering and Adobe Premiere anyway. Make uh, me making these videos easier. And as you all know, everything that I do on climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com is free of charge. Creative Commons, meaning it's free for the masses. And any donation will be appreciated. But especially on my birthday, um, Daddy needs a new video camera. Well, let's get right to the video, um, uh, new video card. Um, the, the video for today is about counter geoengineering and fake plastic trees. So this has been a pretty crazy topic. Um, geoengineering, for those who are uninitiated, is the idea that the Earth's going to blow up from greenhouse gases and that we're all going to overheat and we can make fake volcanoes to cover the sky in pollutant particles, metal particles, diamond dust, sulfur, and that that could cool the planet or that we could suck CO2 out of the air. And that would save the planet from runaway global warming. Ooh. But what most people don't know is that climate change has happened in the past. It will happen in the future. The, the climate's always changing. But the most severe climate change that we've seen here in America happened during the 1930s. And it was called the Dust Bowl. So we're going to hop over here to climateviewer.com slash pollution, which you can find right here at the top. Just hit pollution map and FAQ, which stands for frequently asked questions. And I'm going to give this little bad boy a scroll and come down here to the end, past the subsections. And there's a section right here that says climate change 1.0, the dust bowl. Now, when we had the dust bowl back in the 1930s, uh, we had huge dust storms that were plaguing the entire Midwest, and uh, it, was, it was really bad. I mean, if you're imagining climate change in the future as they describe it, all of that happened back in the 30s. So what did we do to fix climate change in the past? We planted trees. It was called the Great Plains Shelter Belt Project, and during that, we planted 220 million trees over 18,600 miles and uh, you know the federal response to the Dust Bowl including the Prairie States forestry program which planted the Great Plains Shelter Belt and the creation of the Soil Erosion Service represent the largest most focused effort of the United States government to address an environmental pro problem ever um, so that's where we're at, you know, that back during the 30s, we had severe climate change. And what did we do to fix it? We planted trees. It seems like a no-brainer. Um, for those who followed my techno, um, technocracy in the Water Wars presentation, you know, the destruction of, of trees is key in the water cycle for producing clouds and rainfall, 
But um, as it pertains to global warming, trees suck CO2. It's their food. I mean, they suck it out of the air and they put it in the ground. They remove pollution. You know, I love trees. I speak for the trees. I will continue to speak for the trees. Um, you know, that's just me. You know, that's me and my daughter right there talking to the Lorax about the problem and me mapping pollution on climateviewer.org. So I certainly speak for the trees and that's what this video is about, speaking for the trees. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, this geoengineering idea and planting trees and why it's, you know, really being discounted when it should be the number one focus worldwide um, instead of trying to regulate geoengineering, um, make it legal and come up with all these laws to govern control of the sky. Uh, here's our solution. So I did a video a little while back. Uh, this was May 5th, 2018 plant trees or geoengineering will kill billions. Um, you guys, I'll drop that in chat for you. This is being live streamed on Facebook. This will be available on YouTube later, and there will be an article with all of these links um, after the video is done. Um, trees suck. LOL. Love the comment, Reuben. <laughs> they do. They suck CO2. Big surprise. Um, but this is a great video as a starting point. Kind of goes over some of the points I'm going to cover in here, but I'm going to go a little deeper this time. So, what happened to the shelter belts? Well, they're being cut down. In Nebraska, historic shelter belts are making way for more crops. Now, this is a twofold problem because we all who are familiar with the chemtrail problem or the cirrus cloud problem or the aviation induced cloudiness problem, hashtag cirrus clouds matter. Um, know that biofuels are being used to control those clouds now. And biofuels are jet fuel and diesel fuel that are being grown as crops. And as they make this push towards biofuels as a solution to climate change, they're actually exacerbating the problem because farmers are, now have more incentive to cut down more trees. So that's, that's one big problem. Um, a few rainy seasons won't stop the coming drought. It's like they're telling you to your face, hey man, because of climate change, the dust bowls will be a returning. And that's sad because as I already previously stated, you know, we fix the dust bowl by dealing with erosion, huge crops and you know, the whole idea of planting trees as windbreaks. Well, they're cutting them down. So as climate um, risks rise, scientists call for rules on solar geoengineering. This is October 1st, 2018. So of course, you know, this is the Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative, SRMGI, you know, the legalization of geoengineering the figuring out how to pay for the dead people caused as a result of geoengineering solar radiation management or spraying sunscreen in the sky. So that's a big no-no. And as a result, um, I just recently, October 12th, 2018, covered this one, Hands Off Mother Earth Manifesto, a permanent ban on geoengineering 110 civil society organizations and popular movements demand an immediate stop to climate geoengineering. However, they are not talking about accidental geoengineering from jets and ships, ship tracks, and contrail cirrus. So they're just talking about this legalized geoengineering that they're also worried about the stuff being pushed by Bill Gates, David Keith, Ken Caldera, Alan Robach, and the likes. Um, so that's a big deal. But as a result, um, Sylvia Ribeiro from the ETC group wrote a great article against geoengineering. Like I said, all of these links will be available on climateviewer.com in, in you know an article after this video is done. So uh, you'll be able to read this, but she had a great link in here that I found quite fascinating, and I think you will too. 
Stopping solar geoengineering through technical means a preliminary assessment of counter geoengineering. So the idea here is that say China or say America decided to go ahead and do geoengineering solar radiation management legally or with the CIA or the US Air Force, you know, and started or by modifying jet fuel and that they legally, you know, decided, um, as they call it, unilaterally to um, spray the sky to block sunlight. Well, there are countermeasures that could be taken by another country. Um, and they said, you know, we begin by extinguishing two kinds of counter geoengineering countervailing with a warming agent and a neutralizing and neutralizing with a physical disruption so those are the two types of counter geoengineering another country could do if one were to deploy legalized geoengineering solar radiation management or stratospheric aerosol injection that's a big no-no so we're really talking about weather warfare as a result of a country deciding to do geoengineering that would be hella bad right um but this is the big one you know that's really getting the most attention now is the fake plastic trees and by fake plastic trees we're talking about what's called carbon sequestration sequestration and the the general idea is there make fake trees i mean why would you make fake trees when you could just plant trees artificial volcanoes ships that paint clouds whiter and forests of fake trees planted across the outback yeah gotta love that and what would those fake trees look like well this was an artist's rendition of some fake trees in china um, they could be sucking CO2 out of the sky in a city near you. And, you know, it's a horrible idea. <laughs> you know, I mean, do we have to replace all of nature? I mean, my gosh. But David Keith, who is one of the top proponents of geoengineering solar radiation management, who is doing the SCOPEX outdoor experiment on geoengineering SRM in Arizona this year, who was mentioned by name in the Hands Off Mother Earth manifesto. Um, they literally said, you know, that call for an immediate stop to all open air experiments, including the SCOPEX project in Tucson, Arizona. Um, Tucson, Arizona happens to be where Chris Haskell just literally got railroaded. So that may be a coincidence, but David Keith's scope eggs are stratospheric controlled, ah, I'm forgetting the, the acronym, but anyway, um, perturba perturbation experiment. Um, he's going to be using balloons to spray the sky to test, you know, geoengineering SRM. And David Keith also plays the other side of the coin with a company that he owns and he's a part of called Carbon Engineering. And Carbon Engineering makes flight fake plastic trees. Oh my. So this is what CO2 sequestration looks like on a large scale. And as you can see here, they have wind turbines that suck, you know, the air through and pull the car carbon dioxide they have air to fuels to turn the co2 into jet fuel or transport it you know and it specifically says jet a like diesel gasoline or jet a <laughs> you gotta you gotta love this stuff you can't make it up people um but this is what a carbon sequestration plant would look like bunch of fans um sucking co2 out of the air why not just plant trees you know what I mean? That's that's the general idea we're going for here. So, on that note, October 5th, 2018, scientists championed forests as unsung hero of climate action. Duh. Uh, forests really are the unsung hero for our struggle to address climate change, said Deborah Lawrence of the University of Virginia professor and one of 40 scientists who backed the statement emphasizing how Earth's climate depends on forests. 
Bravo, honey. Bravo. Finally, some some sense. Um, so you know that made my my heart sing. Oh, but I have more. So then we get to this one, uh, Sierra Club, <coughs> um, who I do dislike quite a bit. Um, I had a run in with the Sierra Club guy at the EPA hearing I attended on airplane pollution. And I said, what do you think about the, the planes making clouds, the stuff that I said in my speech? And he said, oh, that, that's pure puppycock. First time in my life anybody ever said poppycock to me. Um, you don't want to know what my response to him was. But regardless, um, forest conservation is a part of cli the climate conversation too. And this is dated September 25th, 2018. Interestingly enough, um, I was looking down here at the bottom and this really upset me. While the logging industry in the South claims that wood pellets are prim primarily produced using limbs, sawdust, and other forestry byproducts, Smith says that dogwood and other environmental groups have documented logging operations taking down whole forests to produce the pellets, meaning Europe's quest for clean energy could be exacerbating the destruction of American forest land. Now what they're talking about is biofuels and literally that the EU is buying up wood pellets to burn to offset climate change by taking out my forests in South Carolina. Hands off my forest, bro. You, you're going to make me very upset. So um, that really led me to, you know, doing a little more research on that. And, uh, you know, here's a little bit more on that. Europe's policy to treat wood as low carbon fuel poised to harm global forests. So it, it, it's, it doesn't make any sense, right? So let's cut down the trees to replace them with fake plastic trees because wood could be a good renewable fuel if we, you know, use biomass and all this stuff. I mean, these people, the way they think is just so downright sick. Um, so anyway, there's this report called Seeing the Forest. And like I said, all of this is, this is standforforests.org. Shout out to them for, for having a brain. Um, and you look down here, predicted damage, uh, 2080 to 2099, um, you know, from deforestation. And you go down here a little further and you can see the U.S. South is a hot spot for industrial logging purple. And this is the purple dots shown here as forest disturbance. Now I've seen this in my county, you know, where these logging trucks come in, they literally clear cut the whole forest. And it makes me mad as hell every time I see it. But the fact that I now realize that a lot of this is going to the EU to be ground up into pellets, to burn as, you know, climate offsetting, uh, CO2, you got, I mean, you got to be kidding me, right? Uh, so check that stuff out. It's pretty upsetting. Links will be in the article when this video is done. Regreening the planet could cut as much carbon as halting oil use report. That's right. Natural solutions such as tree planting, protecting peatlands, and better land management could all account for 37% of all cuts needed by 2030, study says. says study. So this is like I'm saying about the Dust Bowl. We fixed climate change in the past by planting trees. This is a no-brainer. Um, but you can't go and plant just the same tree in large swaths because you know that's what they they're doing over in china uh the best technology for fighting climate change trees <laughs> i mean i don't know how else to say it you know th that's what we, we should be doing but seeing the forest for the trees world's largest reforestation program overlooks wildlife and uh, this is from uh, Princeton University Woodrow Wilson School of Public 
uh, Public and International Affairs. New research found that China's reforestation pro program, the world's largest overwhelmingly, leads to planting of monoculture forests that fall short of restoring the biodiversity of natural forests and can even harm existing wildlife. So the problem here is that they're literally planting, it says right here, has transformed 69.2 million acres of cropland and barren scrubland back into forest. But they're planting just the same kind of tree like a bamboo forest or a eucalyptus forest or a Japanese cedar forest. But this is what a mixed forest looks like. This is what it should look like. It should be a little bit of everything. Mono, nature abhors monoculture. So what we need to be doing is preserving the natural forests we have. And if we're going to replant forests, we need to replant them the way they are naturally. Like where I'm at, there would be some pine trees, some oak trees, you know, hardwoods and softwoods. Um, you know, evergreens, you know, all the mix, not just, all right, let's put, you know, several million acres of bamboo up and call it a day. So, you know, this has to be done responsibly, but planting trees is still the best option, period. And that's where we should be going with this. Um, interestingly enough, <laughs> I thought this was kind of funny. Um, owner finance, finances thousands of acres to off-gridders and wilderness lovers. And you can see right here, um, one man has a vision to help people buy land in the wake of the housing collapse of 2007. But, I mean, literally the guy is saying, leave it as forest, live off the grid, and I'll sell you the land. Bravo to that, too. So... What's the summary of all this? The summary is this. We don't need geoengineering to fix climate change. We don't need anybody spraying the sky with a fake sunscreen. We need to plant trees. Trees are being decimated. You know, old growth forests in Brazil being clear cut to put down palm trees so they can make palm sugar. Um, th there's just so many issues with trees right now. And we can live with nature. This is a fact. I mean, we can figure out new ways to build skyscrapers around the trees. Even in China, they're literally planting trees on skyscrapers. So we've got to figure out some way to live with our trees and replant the trees that have been decimated, not use them as a biofuel source or, you know, discount them. I, I read a scientific paper one time, no joke, that said planting trees is not an option for climate change because it would take hundreds of years to make up for the amount of CO2 we put in. And I claim complete bullshit on that. So, you know, we need to start now and we need to focus on planting trees. Um, and I hope that you guys will share this video. Um, this is this is definitely the pollution solution. The Lorax approves of this solution. I approve of this solution. Um, and you know, enough with the techno fixes. You cannot fix um, the problems that we've created. You know, with the climate, with the same mentality that created the problem. So less techno fixes, more nature. Um, you know, Gaia has a beautiful way of handling our climate, um, with phytoplankton and with trees and natural bacteria that can, you know, fix all of this. And all we have to do is get out of the way. So we can at least start by planting trees. I hope that you guys will uh, continue to support my work at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org and weathermodificationhistory.com. I hope that you'll support planting trees. And since it's my birthday, if you guys are really feeling benevolent, help a brother get a new video card because seeing this dead $600 video card and not being able to play Battlefield 5 and blow off some steam, because this is some stressful work that I'm doing here, um, it would be really great to replace this dead video card. Oh man, I'm oh, this thing was so badass. Um, but regardless, um,
love you mean it um and i hope that you guys will share this video because this planting tree solution is a real solution um not geoengineering not carbon sequestration by artificial means and fake plastic trees so there you have the information now and information is power so use that power responsibly by attacking ideas not people love you mean it